Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Jund Sacrifice. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. If you don't know what we do here at It Resolves, we play a new deck every day, we have a great time, and we hopefully learn a little something along the way. If that sounds like your cup of tea, please leave a like on this video. Please subscribe to the channel. You will get notified for tons of videos because we do release quite a few, but, Today, we are taking a look at Jun Sacrifice in Standard. Now, this deck was taken from MTG Melee. I will link the deck post down below. Uh, you can find the creator name there and all that stuff, uh, but this is a really, really fun deck. I'm a little curious to see how it works, and we'll talk about why as we go through, but before we do that, let's actually just talk about how the deck works. Uh, it is an Oni Cult Anvil deck, so we are looking to sacrifice artifacts, get a lot of extra value from those artifacts, but but this really goes all in on the strategy and we'll talk about why as we go. Uh, first and foremost, we have a beautiful little turn one play here. Uh, Teething Wormlet. How freaking cute is that? Uh, it's a one one for one, uh, but it has death touch as long as you control three or more artifacts of which we are hoping to get blood tokens and treasure tokens in particular. Uh, but additionally, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. And if it's the first time this ability is resolved, it resolves uh, on your turn, put a one one counter on teething wormlet. So this throughout the game, if left unanswered, will grow, gain us life and hopefully make it difficult for the opponent it to attack in thanks to that death touch as well. Uh, now to help trigger it we do have things like Valderan Epicure, a tried and true classic little one drop here, gonna throw a blood token down, good fodder for the Oni Cult Anvil and it digs us further into the deck if we need to. Uh, we do have Mishra's Research Desk, kind of an interesting one, one mana artifact, one mana tap it, sack it, exile the top two cards of your deck, you can choose one of them until the end of the next turn you can play that card but you can also unearth this card for an extra trigger off of the Wormlet, uh, which is actually really cool. And it also, of course, sacrifices here too. So very good. Uh, Blood Tithe Harvester, obviously gonna be throwing some blood tokens around as well. We do have a single go for the throat. I would be very curious to see if going for two go for the throats and only uh, and taking out the cut down might be a little better. I have run into some issues with that, but we'll talk about that as we go. Four Transmogrants, Transmogrants crown uh, full four of these artifact equipment two mana equip creature gets plus two plus zero which is great but when it dies you actually draw a card uh, and so again we're actually getting some extra value here there's also some little mini combos throughout this that we'll talk about too uh, we do have old rutstein in here hopefully going to be able to throw some extra value onto the board which is great uh, fable of the mirror breaker of course just an obvious include for the deck and then finally skyfisher spider may not seem like a great great card, but when it enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice a creature, ideally one that you may have equipped up and maybe even attacked with the crown. Uh, you sacrifice that creature. When you do, the opponent has to also, you get to destroy one of their non-land permanents, I should say. Uh, and then when this dies, you actually gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. And if you do, you exile this from your graveyard. Uh, there's some, there's tons of little combos with this, but most importantly, you can actually use Fable to copy this, get extra triggers off of it. It just does all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, now, I will go ahead and say I have not gotten this deck down 100%. I am still learning, so you guys are going to be learning along with me, but I hope that we can represent this deck as well as we, perfect, as, as we possibly can and hopefully have some fun with it. It really is a fun deck. It is traditionally a um, like best of three deck, uh, and so when you get to the deck description, you will see that it does have a full sideboard. Not 100% sure if it's going to work great on the best of one last but I'm hoping we can at least get a win or two because I do think it has the legs to do some awesome stuff there. So let's give it a shot, guys. Let's see how we do. And again, thank you so much for being here. Please subscribe if you're new and let's see if we can get some wins. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. A bit of an awkward hand, actually. Uh, funny enough, because of the uh, colored mana that we have. It's dual, dual lands here, but we will go for it. Uh, unfortunately, they do come into play tapped, which is not ideal, but we can do the best we can with it. Uh, it also looks a little choppy. I wonder why. Maybe that's maybe that we solved it. All right, let's see what we're up against. It looks like the humans deck, potentially, uh, which is going to be a bit of a frustrating matchup, to say the least. But let's go ahead and throw the Epicure down. 
Uh, whoops. And we'll go ahead and play the land. So first strike, if you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead, and you can tap one and a white to give it plus one, plus one till the end of the turn. Very interesting card. Uh, not gonna block. Gonna let that uh, damage roll on through. Uh, very happy to get a green source there, actually. That was pretty awesome. Uh, the question becomes, what do we go for here? Uh, we could go for a handful of things. First and foremost, we could equip. Doesn't seem terrible, but also doesn't seem great. I kind of like getting the old Rutstein down. Um, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I do think this might be just the best option. We get another blood token here, which is good. Uh, we do, again, really want a critical mass on these artifacts as best we can. And like I said, Old Rutstein really helps with that in multiple ways. Um, looks like they're going to get probably a solid attack in, which is fine. Uh, hopefully, okay. So they did have an answer for the Old Rutstein, but at the very least, we do get to draw some cards. Uh, or excuse me, gain some life, not draw some cards. So I am fine with that. They're gonna hit the damage in, that's fine. Again, not gonna block, I don't think now is the time. All right, uh, now might be the time though to Skyfish or Spider. I think that is going to be the play. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we are gonna sacrifice this to blow up the wedding announcement here. So now, again, not a great place of course, but we do at the very least have a nice little 3-3 blocker here. They don't easily get to attack in, and because they played another spell, we know they can't attack with the knight safely. Uh, now we'll see if... Ah, they just have another lay down arms. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so now they are gonna get the attack in. Also, totally didn't even acknowledge this. I have a completely different camera setup now, as you may have noticed. Um, should have probably mentioned that. <laughs> I did not, uh, but that's okay. I think here I'm actually just going to leave open uh, the go for the throat um, because I kind of want to see if they invest mana into it, uh, which is really the ideal situation. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Haven't seen that for quite some time. So, uh... I think actually, because I don't want them to draw an extra card, I will go ahead and do this now. Um, this just means if they want to attack in, they know they're just going to be sacrificing a free card here, basically. Um, which is fine by me, but... Yeah, I will just go ahead and block the Spirited Companion. I don't think there's a huge reason not to. They might have something here, and if they do, that's kind of fine. Um, they can definitely just create a little 1-1 one -one if they would like. Or just draw a card. That works too. Perfectly fine. Um, ooh, there we go. Now we're talking. Uh, I think it's actually... I kind of don't want to discard anything, do I? I'm not really sure. Um, I'm going to submit zero. We'll, we'll see. Not 100% sure on that, but... Get that in. Let's throw this down. Um... Let's go ahead and equip up the uh, the little goblin here and get an attack in. Uh, this is going to create a treasure token, which just gains us a life. It's not really that big of a deal. Uh, but importantly, of course, we do get four damage in. And I think I'll just go ahead and gain another life. I don't really see a reason not to. Um, and we can actually pop this at any time, which is kind of nice. I do want to keep the death touch on here, potentially, but like... They don't have a safe attack, which is nice. Uh, so we'll see what they're up to. Um, they have drawn just quite a lot of cards at this point. I mean, we're at 46, they're at 41, so they're five draws ahead of us. Uh, that's pretty significant. Um, they don't have the Coven uh, ability, which is nice, right? Like that 3-3 that three, three lifelink is actually kind of an annoying number. Um, but thankfully they can't activate that quite yet and they do only have two mana left so I don't really anticipate them having too much to do here. Um, so the question becomes, do we pop the desk? I think we will. I think that's fine. Uh, we lose the death such here, which is important-ish. Uh, no, technically I guess we don't, do we? My fault, we do not. Totally my fault. Uh, and we got an anvil, which is like, probably the best thing we could have gotten. Um, I am going to go ahead and pull one of the triggers now uh, because we do just kind of want to get as much going as we can. Um, 
I guess we'll just go ahead and do this. Not really sure if that's the right call. All right. Um, I think I do attack him with both of these. Yeah, I think I will. Uh, this technically could sacrifice the Wormlet, but they're going to have to double block and we actually would get to kill both of the creatures. Uh, so an easy little two for one there that I think is probably worth it. They're just going to go for the kill on that. That's fine. We get to draw an extra card here. Oh, it's another anvil. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. All right. Um, and I think I will just go ahead and pull the trigger once again. That just gives us another one. Um, I think I hold that. This actually gets sacrificed, unfortunately. We don't have the mana to deal with it, but I think we made the right call playing the anvils. That's a more important piece to our puzzle. And now we are like... Our goal isn't necessarily to attack in for the win anymore, right? We've got two anvils on the field. Uh, and really at this point, our goal is like equip up, sacrifice with the anvil. That draws us a card. It's also going to trigger two of these. So like we're kind of getting a lot going here. They might just have some scary stuff, but I like they could have a depopulate here or some kind of sweeper. I think we just let this through though, because in the in the case that they don't, there's really not a lot they're going to be able to do. Um, I kind of anticipate this being the hideaway deck. Uh, the I forget the the enchantment's name, but the white hideaway um, enchantment seems like the kind of card this deck would want. I haven't seen it yet, uh, but it definitely seems like that kind of deck. Oh, let's just. Let's just go ahead and throw that out there. One thing you'll notice, by the way, guys, we do have a lot of these pain lands. Um, it's not super uncommon for this deck at all. Um, let's go ahead and equip this little guy up. Uh, I will copy this. I'm not 100% sure if this is right, but we just get to gain a lot of extra life by doing this. So, I mean, that seems fair, right? And this just has death touch. Um, Let's let's attack in first, right? Yeah, that seems like the right call. Not gonna attack with the the three three. Um, let's see. Again, this is where, I, I, as I said at the beginning, this is a hundred percent where I'm not like hundred percent sold that I know I'm doing the right thing. Um, I think it's okay that I don't know, but I'm just giving you that heads up. I'm actually gonna let this damage happen. Uh, just so we can get an extra thing off the field because these actually just trigger anyway. <laughs> um, and now we gain three life. <laughs> I guess we could have dealt quite a bit that way, but I think this is fine. Let's go ahead and equip up the one that is going to die, which is great. Um, we'll throw you down, I suppose. Um, and yeah. So this is going to die. It's going to draw us a card. Um, which is just free, essentially. Uh, and we're at 21, they are at nine, nine, not 19. I was about to say 19. Uh, recruitment officer is a little sketchy for sure, but again, we've got the life gain to kind of mitigate a lot of this. That's a little scary. Brutal Cathar is not ideal, but I don't know that it, truthfully, hear me out, they can hit a teething wormlet, which is fine, but we just get to copy more with the reflection. Alternatively, they could just kill the reflection, which probably is the right call, right? Yeah. Um, all right, so we just have to kind of let that happen. We don't have a good block there um, in our hand or anything, so we're just gonna have to let that happen, and we'll see what they do. Kind of curious to see if they actually attack in. Um, <laughs> I don't know that that's the right call, but I'd be curious. Uh, worth noting, by the way, we are netting an extra little construct every time we pull the trigger on this. So like, it's just kind of a nice place to be. Uh, they do get to gain some life here though, which is a little annoying. Would love to get either another anvil just to like go critical mass on this um, and spread out as much as we can. I feel like that's probably the best solution against this deck. Um, just because I don't really think they've got a lot, like, this isn't all that scary to me. Um, so they can coven this, right? 
and it would get an extra little hit there. Um, okay. I actually think I just block here. And if they want to coven this, uh, actually, no, I should have blocked. They can't coven that. They don't have the mana. Um, all right. I just don't want them to have the recruitment officer, but I just realized it has double strike. Oh no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, the rest of the bottom. Why does it have double strike? Am I missing something? Oh, this gave it double strike. Got it. That makes sense. Totally missed that, but that's cool. Uh, should not have double blocked. That was just bad call on my end. All right, let's do this. Uh, let's uh, equip you up. Let's attack with you. Probably let them kill it. Oh no, they're just gonna take the three. Cool. Um, let's kill it ourselves. <laughs> uh, that's fine by me. Um, so we're gonna get a couple counters thrown around. We're gonna get two of these little guys, which is great. And we gain some life. Um, I will definitely cycle this because it's really not doing us much good at this point. That's fine-ish. Um, let's equip up. Let's actually equip up you. I don't know if that's correct, 100%, but that's what we're gonna do. Um, I think it's better because it gives us another like kill block. You know what I mean? Uh, also, this is turning into a very long game. Uh, we may only get one or two in this time, but I hope at least two. Uh, this is, I think, the downside, by the way. This is, I, th I think, showing the true colors of a uh, best of three deck being played in a best of one format. A lot of the best of one decks are obviously just looking to critical mass as quickly as possible and get in for the win. Our deck is a little more tactful, I guess is the best way to say that. I don't know if that's, I think that's an accurate statement. Uh, to the point where it's just like, it's a little bit different, right? Like it's not as, um, it's not as like go crazy. It's more like let's play the long game if we need to kind of thing, uh, which is important to note. Uh, do we just draw a card here? I think I will. Um, cause it also is gonna, yeah, it's gonna deal a little damage. Awesome. Uh, another teething wormlet is not bad. Let's throw that down. Let's throw this down. Gain a bunch of life, uh, three life, not a ton. Throw you down. I think I just kind of go for it, right? Not really overly concerned. I just kind of push the, the damage through as best I can. Cool. Uh, let's equip one of you guys up. Seems easy enough. Uh, and let's equip another one of you guys up. Or you shall leave the battlefield. Cool. <laughs> All right, uh, and we could just let him die and we still get the, the stuff. All right, so the question is how how heavy handed do we want to go here? Um, if we attack like this, <laughs> is that too scary or do we just block like this? I think I'll just attack with the six. Uh, just because it's lethal on its own, so like they're gonna block it and if they want to go to like kill it well i guess they have lifelink but that's fine i don't that doesn't matter that much um they can get a free block here we can actually just sacrifice this in response so they don't actually gain the life so if they block incorrectly here we can still no nah, they're they're fine they're gonna get it uh they can discard to make this indestructible also <clears throat> this is all fine don't particularly care um Oh, they are gonna double block. Wow, okay, cool. Uh, that's fine by me. That just means I get to kill the officer at the very least. Um, let's go ahead and sack this just so they don't gain any life and we deal a bunch of damage and gain a bunch of life. <laughs> I love the life gain. Like the engines that this deck has are just phenomenal in my opinion. Um, it's just a really fun little deck. Uh, yeah, cool. Works for me. Um, 
Are they going to discard a card to give this indestructible is the question. Looks like they are. It's just a land, so that makes sense. Cool. So, uh, we do get the recruitment officer off the field, which is nice. We get to draw another card here, and we still have more than enough to kind of take this down. Unfortunately, still not enough to, like, win yet, uh, but we are kind of getting close. This is a slow roll deck, guys. That's all I'm going to say. Um, actually, don't mind that. It's an extra artifact, right? So, any extra... Any extra artifact on the field just represents a little bit more life gain, which just means, like, if they attack, it doesn't really matter. Um, we also wanted to leave up the anvil here because when they attack here, uh, we just get to sack in response, and it's free, essentially. Uh, it just mitigates the life gain. Um, so let's just make sure we're going to go into full control mode. Don't care about this three at all. Um, literally doesn't matter. Let's do this. All right, get out of full control now. Um, cool. So they deal three, we deal one in that transaction. I guess we we lose two, not three, technically. Um, sure. Uh, this card, by the way, Halo Fountain, just like super good, man. If you've never played with it, it's amazing. Uh, that's very good too. It's just more creatures for them. Truthfully, like, we just want anvils to be able to, like, <laughs> ping them to death, I think. Um, is that helpful? I don't think so, really. Um, I'm actually going to throw both of these back, because I can unearth this if I want. That's nice-ish. Huh. Does that change math at all? Um, maybe, right? Let's do this. Always do this first, right? <clears throat> what an interesting, what an interesting game this has been. <laughs> um, so I think we just sack this, right? I think we actually just killed this. Now we get two of these guys back and we gain a bunch more life. Um, I don't think I'm overly concerned about these, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, so we can just drop this and then suit up. Uh, that might just be a good play. I guess so. I don't know. See, this is where I feel like I'm really not so sure. Um, <laughs> just because there's like, there's a lot of nuance to this deck, which is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. It's just... It's confusing as heck sometimes. Um, I am going to go here. Uh, and this has, they can just discard here. So I guess we don't do anything. Maybe it was incorrect to do that. Maybe it would have been better to go elsewhere. I kind of just want to swing in. <laughs> um, they can save one of them. Ugh. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I don't think this is correct. I'll be honest. I, I'm just like, this game has gone on for goodness. This is the only game we're gonna get in. This is a long, long game. Oh, okay. Don't love that, obviously. Yep. Well, that sucks. Uh, so basically here, all they have to do is exile the one, and then they've got Guardian of New Banalia that they can discard and block to. Um, wish I could sack this, but I can't. No, I don't think I want to do that yet. They're going to gain the two life. I was thinking if I could deal four, uh, but I just can't, unfortunately. And here they're just going to get a free block. So yeah, this was all basically a bad call, <laughs> uh, which is fine. It happens. Uh, we get them to discard a card. So yeah, <laughs> and we draw a card. So that's good. Um, we, I guess, can't really bring these back either, so that's fine. Just discard a land. Yep. Cool. Uh, let's see what we draw. Alright. Um, yeah. Cool. I think we just pass. Um, 
six damage. All we have to do is deal six damage. This has been a crazy game. Let me just say, this has been a fun game at the very least, right? Like, why is that stuck there? At the very least, this has been a fun game. Um, worth noting, whatever they put the counter on has first strike, so we do need to keep that in mind. At this point, I don't think it really matters. Um, just from the standpoint of like, they, they can basically deal as much damage as they want. And I don't really care that much. Um, that's oversimplification because we did just get rid of our little wormlets. <laughs> um, but that technically is like kind of fair. Um, uh, yeah, I was going to say that seemed like a bit of a sketchy play. <laughs> Uh, do we try and force a block? Oh, they're gonna enlist. Okay. The untap here is what the... That's where the problem's at, right? Like, so it has first strike, so no. So I guess what we do is this, and then go into full control and just sack it. Um, yeah, it's just so hard for them to get damage through also, like, I'm not saying we're gonna win, but I'm just saying, like, we have the means to end this kind of on board with just sacrificing stuff, like, eventually we win, and they don't have a lifelinker anymore. Um, so I feel like there's a world where we just get to do this, but, I mean, you never know, they, they've got plenty of options too, so. We don't lose seven life though, which is helpful. That's really good. Okay. That's actually really scary. They just get to refill their hands. So now they have a means of finding this little, this little ambitious farm hand. <laughs> oh, instead they've got that, but they can't play it this turn, which is really good for us actually, because <laughs> yeah, that's actually really good. I mean, we could have sacrificed this. It didn't really matter that much, but all right. Uh, let's do this. Um, deals with damage. <laughs> let's suit you up. Um, I'm wondering what the best outcome is here. I wish this deck just had burn. If we just had a play with fire, man, that would be sick. Um, let's actually do this. Uh, yeah, we'll get rid of you. I'm not sure that that's the right call. Um, so this creates two more little dudes. Forest is less than ideal. Um, or like trample. <laughs> trample would be good. Um, <laughs> let's throw this here <laughs> just to make it a lethal threat and then when it dies we we get a little further in um this is so silly I'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna attack him see what we draw right like it can't hurt to see what we draw i feel like so why not um these guys are fairly expendable so <laughs> so they're just gonna block there do we care about getting this off the field I think I'd rather just have the life loss on their end. Um, little surprised they didn't go for this, which just means they might just have two really good cards, which is scary enough. Okay, uh, that's completely useless. Um. <laughs> this basically just gonna equip this up to everything that's like a little itty bitty fella so we can <laughs> can gain as much as we want oh man what a silly deck this has turned out to be uh yeah we'll throw you down do we want to throw the sham or the fable out or do we just want to go here um yeah i'll throw the fable out Cutdown's not gonna get a target, so I feel like let's be mana efficient. 
Man, this is a, a crazy game. I can't believe how ridiculous this has been. Um, <laughs> this is insane. All right, let's see what they can do. <laughs> we just need like, if we had two anvils, we would, uh, two more anvils, we would be done. Um, this would not be a problem. Yep, they're gonna kill this. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Just don't have lifelink. That's like literally all I care about. Um, I'm, like this is the nice part too, by the way. Uh, these brutal cathars are really annoying normally, and they're still annoying now. But they're really not the end of the world in this scenario. Like it's frustrating, cool. It's not that big of a deal. Um, okay. Wow, interesting attack there. Um, yeah. Cool, all right, uh, definitely block here. I think we definitely block this. And I think we just let the rest happen. Um, and then we're gonna anvil the construct. to draw a card um since we're not gonna kill that anyway it like doesn't really matter all right what do we get land that's less than exciting we have to deal two damage can we we should be able to do this next turn um i also have been really slow rolling the anvils a little bit mostly because i didn't want to get all out onslaughted you know um which i think is fair theoretically if they can't gain life we win it's a huge theoretical. <laughs> this is such a long game. Um, all right, cool. Look, a land. How helpful. <laughs> like at this point, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Spend all your mana, please, just so I know everything's good. That'd be really nice. We have enough artifacts, and honestly, even just with what's in hand, we have plenty of artifacts, so it's not really a problem. Life gain is great, but they are not gonna do it. Do we do we win? Oh thank god. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a game. Uh that's gonna be it. Um I will roll a Patreon ad video because it is December first, and then we'll wrap this one up, guys. So let's uh stay tuned. We are gonna actually talk about the deck at the very end. What's up guys, just a quick break from the video to remind you that through the end of December we will have our new proxy pack available via our Patreon rewards and select tiers. In celebration of Phyrexia All Will Be One coming early next year, we have the amazing Original Praetors as our Patreon rewards this month. Now, those include my all-time favorite card, Elish Norn, with Jenga Taxis, Shieldred, and Vorinclex. Again, if you're interested in picking these up, guys, we really would appreciate the support, and it's a great way to pick up these awesome proxies every single month. You can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves. Without further ado, though, let's jump right back into the video. All right, we finally got the win. What a game, uh, what a game. I don't actually think we played, um, like I don't know if we could have necessarily won a lot faster. I think probably could have maybe, but I think more importantly, uh, we were trying to leave up the anvils on both of our turns. So that way like I can block with it and I can be offensively doing something with it and triggering it on our turn. Uh, and so from that standpoint, I actually think we played it pretty well. And obviously we managed to get a win, which is great, uh, especially against, I think, what could have been a very rough deck to be against. Uh, and so I'm very happy with that. Unfortunately, it was only one game. Sorry, guys. Uh, I wish I could say there was more time, but unfortunately, there's just not. So that's going to be it for today. But I do encourage you guys, again, check out this deck. This is a blast. Uh, very nuanced. Very, very nuanced. You'll learn a lot as you play this one, I think. Uh, and so definitely take the opportunity to learn a little bit. I think we got some great new additions with the Brothers War, especially that little teething wormlet. That's an amazing little card for this deck. So definitely worth trying out. I hope you guys enjoy this one, guys. Thank you so much. Do leave a like, subscribe subscribe if you are not already. It really would help us out quite a bit. Uh, and leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. But I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being a part of the It Resolves community. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow.